Welcome to Top Notch Online TV, a paragon of excellence. Today with you is Teacher Rispa, a teacher of English and Literature from PCA Kikuyu High School, an examiner as well as an author. Today we are continuing with the anthology of short stories in a silent song. And today we are going to look at a particular story by the name of Neighborhood Watch. When I'm looking at uh, a story, when I begin looking at a story, we need to talk about the author. We need to talk also about the background from which country is the story being derived from. First of all, the author is someone by the name of Remy, Remy, Ngam, Remy Ngamije. Remy Ngamije was born in Rwanda, but then he is a Namibian. He is a Namibian born in Rwanda. Therefore, when I look at the story, from where it comes from, they have indicated it is from Rwanda and Namibia. Now you're understanding as to why it has been cited as so. Then we're also looking at the, the setting of the story. The setting of the story is in Namibia. They're talking about the capital, they're talking about a place by the name of Windhoek. And then Windhoek, there are some neighborhoods within that they're talking about. What is the relevance of the title? Neighborhood Watch. Neighborhood Watch is with reference to a group of homeless people. They have formed a group and they've named themselves the Neighborhood Watch and they keep uh, foraging for food from the dumpsters and they now are watching neighborhoods to know on which day are we going here, on which day are we going to the other neighborhood, hence the relevance of the title Neighborhood Watch. As you are now looking at the plot analysis, we are going to take the episodic approach. We understand the story better when you take the episodic approach. And the first episode, I'll be calling it Familiarization with the Neighborhood Watch. I want to talk about the members of the Neighborhood Watch and maybe say one or two things about them. Who comprises the Neighborhood Watch? Number one, we have an old man by the name of Elias. And Elias is the de facto leader of that group. We learned that he used to, he landed in the streets homeless and he used to work alone. Later on, he was joined by Lazarus. Lazarus is like the lieutenant, the lieutenant or the second in command. Another person who is part of this neighborhood watch because you want to get familiar with them is a person by the name of Omagano. Omagano is the only female within the group. Apart from Omagano, we have another one by the name of Silas. Silas uh, is also someone you can call, someone who pilfers, he's a petty thief. And finally, we have a new recruit into the group, a person by the name of Martin. We now understand who the neighborhood watch comprises of. Elias, Lazarus, Omagano, Silas, and Martin, they are five in number. About these people, as the story unfolds, we see that Elias, because I've already told you, he's a de facto leader, it's just like natural, he, be uh, he became their leader. And as the story unfolds, Elias is waking them up, and after he has woken them up, there is a drink to be shared, and this drink seems to be shared in terms of hierarchy. First of all, Elias takes a drink, gives to Lazarus, his lieutenant. It passes over to Silas and then to Omagano and finally to the new member. There's barely any when the new member is given to also sip from the same. And as you are continuing to understand uh, these people, this uh, group of the neighborhood watch, there are a number of things you learn about their setup. How do they operate? Number one, you're learning that they have grouped themselves into two. One of the group is called the food duty. The food duty is undertaken by Elias, Lazarus, and Omagano. And as they are headed, headed out into the town, we are being told that they were looking, they were wearing their best clothes. Therefore, they would pass without much of suspicion. Because they are used to, whenever people, whenever people look at them, there's some kind of stigmatization. Stigmatization towards the homeless people, the street urchins. And 
as they are headed out, they are going even into some places such as uh, hotels. And from the hotels, they get to ask for food. We are learning that Elias had people in these uh, hotels, the workers in these hotels, restaurants, they had even got familiar with, they had even got familiar with Elias. They used to call him the captain or the soldier. Another group, we have said there were two groups. The first group was on food duty. On food duty, it used to be Elias. It used to be Lazarus as well as Omagano. And before I move away from the food duty, there's a way they used to do it. They would go and forage in dumpsters. At other times, there are some dumpsters that are having plenty. And we're looking at the poverty within, this, uh, within the setting of this story. The poverty also attracted competition from other people. Even the guards themselves would rummage through the dumpsters and pick what is best. At other times when the guards knew that there was something worth finding, they would ask for bribe. Or at other times, they would threaten to, uh, they would thre threaten to meet violence on them. And at such times, you see that Elias used to pay up when he had the money, you, you can imagine paying up money so that you're given a chance to rummage through the dustbin. And at other times when they didn't have money, they didn't have money to give, what happened? We are being told Omagano used to go with one of the guards behind the dumpsters and do what she needed to do. In understanding, she had to go and prostitute herself, do whatever she needed to do with that guard, and then the others will be given the permission to go ahead and forage through the dumpsters. That used to be the work of the, that used to be the work of the, the ones who are finding food. Then you have a second group. The second group, you are calling them the group of the valuables group. The valuables group, they would go and find things such as old shoes. They would find things such as microwaves, maybe toasters thrown out. They would even find old newspapers. Newspapers were important because they were needed so that these people could start a fire during the night. You know that they live within the street. Now that three, three among their members have already been uh, taken, uh, had already been given the food duty, the remaining two by the name of Silas and Martin, they were the ones who had been given their valuables duty. And we are seeing that what is being said about Silas is that as much as he was short, there was something about his demeanor. There's something about his outward appearance and about his behavior that used to scream dangerous for someone who knew what to look for. For example, they're talking about he had an impish kind of a grin and he had a some kind of a walking style. And away from the walking style and the kind of a grin, we are told about Silas that he also had some eyes that never shied away. And whenever the, the talk was getting very rough for, uh, for Silas, he would start to pat a certain pocket continuously. And Martin is a new recruit and he has been paired with Silas. Martin admires Silas a lot and he even wants to try and walk like S Silas to come out as intimidating. But then we are being told from the way he keeps, he has worn a baggy trouser and the baggy trouser is inhibiting his movement. From time to time, he has to stop and pull up his and pull up his trouser. That is it about the first episode where we are getting familiarized with the neighborhood watch. Then we move ahead to episode two. The episode two, we shall call it the past poor suburbs. Among the suburbs, among this uh, neighborhood watch, we are being told there is a time that they used to visit certain neighborhoods of the poor people. An example in place, I'll talk about a place called Katutura. Uh, the place called Katutura, we are being told in the, it was an example, it was one among the examples of the poor neighborhoods. In these poor neighborhoods, they do not find much they're talk when they go rummaging through their, through their trash, they could find things that are undesirable, things such as used condoms. They're talking about sanitary towels, things of women that had blood. So they're talking about sanitary towels. 
and at a certain time they had found a dead baby thrown in such a dumpster it had been a day before the others had joined the neighborhood watch it was only lazarus lazarus and elias they had they had settled for teaming up they decided we shall be teaming up one needs to find the food another one will be finding the valuables when there are only two then there came a day elias was rummaging through the one among the dustbins in the poor neighborhood and then he jumped out of shock according to uh, lazarus's interpretation he had thought that maybe elias had come across a snake but then as elias continues to tell the story we are being told this story had become a popular story in the evenings in other words they've not heard it once they've heard it a lot of times later on they see something that looks like an umbilical cord and upon further scrutiny they realize it is a dead body it is a dead baby that had been thrown into the dumpster and according to elias the other things are okay the other even finding shit the undesirable things are okay even a dead human being who did not know when was the right time to run his mouth could be killed and thrown in the dumpster he says that is okay much to the astonishment of martin you know martin is still naive he's still just joining the group so when he see hears that a dead person is okay he is shocked what are these people talking about but then elias continues and says even a dead cat and a dead dog they are okay because even a cat according to him it can be used it can be as a sign of someone is using it for witchcraft but then he concludes that a dead baby a dead baby is a uh, is a sign of evil and from then onwards they are no longer rummaging through there uh, through the dumpsters of the poor people taking me to episode 3 episode 3 that I'll be calling the death of amos among their friends I, uh, as we are speaking presently as we are speaking presently i don't think that amos had met the other members of the neighborhood watch but then they are given the story about amos now what happened to amos amos and lazarus as well as elias had gone to irrigate their throats maybe they had come across money you know whenever they get something valuable they get to sell and they get money Now from that money they decided let's go for a drink and when they went to a place called Kamasadal at Kamasadal is where people used to it it used to be something like a drinking den we're being told it's such a place that used to make husbands abandon their wives husbands abandon the family in in favor of going for a drink it so happened that Amos was among them and Amos was someone as they are describing him He was a person who could not hold down his drink in other words he was a weak drinker whenever he used to drink uh, the drink used to get to him he couldn't hold down his drink number one. another thing he couldn't control his mouth as well as his guts they're talking about his mouth was the one that used to cause a lot of trouble for Amos one of them he would say some rude word to someone a curse word and then because he had guts that he couldn't control he refuses to apologize and what happens to Amos this time he encountered a he encountered a, the wrong person and the person ended up knifing Amos twice they're talking about the movement of the knife in to his stomach he pulled it out he he inserted it in once more and out and This guy Amos just staggers and he falls down. And upon the man falling down they're saying it used to be such a such a bad incident for you to be found near a dead body. Therefore what do people do? They scamper. They scamper for safety. When they run away, the reason they're giving is the police would always come and they would interrogate people and the man in which they're interrogating people they are harassing people. They're talking about hard booted interrogations in other words the police would really beat you step on you until you give them information even information you didn't have as much as these people were friends to Amos they had to scamper for their own safety the police later catch up with them and when the police catch up with them they inter- interrogate them first of all roughly they are being they are subjected to beatings 
But what helped them is that they stuck to their story. We did not see who killed Amos. Even if you give us a lineup of photographs, we cannot identify the person. At first, the police are adamant on pinning it on them. The police are asking, are you sure you are not given some 200 so that you can kill Amos, but they stick to their story. They don't know anything. And we are being told they were let off with a warning. The warning was, uh, the warning that they were let off with was something in the tune of broken ribs. At the same time, we are looking at they had bruised faces. And they from then onwards, they are avoiding Kamasadal because that place, they're thinking, the person who killed Amos, when he sees them back there, he'll be thinking they've come for retribution. They've come to retaliate on behalf of their friend. Therefore, from that day onwards, they've cut ties with Kamasadal. This takes me to my last episode, the last episode that I'll be calling Wealthy Suburbs. The Wealthy Suburbs are covered between pages 82 and page 83. Among these uh, neighborhoods, I'll be calling, I'll be giving an example of Eros as well as Avis. And in Eros, it has a special attachment to the neighborhood watch because in this place, there was someone by the name of Miss Bez Bezudenhout. Miss Bezudenhout was sa a certain white woman that was generous. This white woman used to even come, uh, come out of her house with a, a plastic bag and in the plastic bag, she has been kind enough to share food. Food in the tune of in the tune of canned beans, bananas, and all that. It's like she used to sympathize with the neighborhood watch. And there's a certain time that Silas is wondering, this woman is very generous. And then the way she's generous, now she, he is asking their leader, Elias, how come she does not give us a space within her garage, a space, uh, a space where we can sleep. Why don't you even ask her for things such as medicine, for things such as soap? And Elias's answer was that Miss Be Bezudenhout had taken more from them than what she is giving. And we are also looking at, away from Mrs. Bezudenhout, we are talking about their affluent neighborhoods. Eros, Avis. There's another thing particular about these uh, rich neighborhoods. They're even able to separate their trash. What is recyclable, rec recyclable is put aside. What is uh, things that are rotting will also be put at a different place. They seem to have some kind of order in their waste disposal. But still, people are wary of the neighborhood watch whenever the neighborhood watch is within the vicinity. For instance, you are being told some people, they tightened the leash on their dogs. As they are walking their dogs in the dawn, during dawn or in the evening, they tighten the leash. In other words, they are scared. What if these people might attack us? Therefore, we also see these people are not received with a lot or with, with, uh, with the friendliness. In, in fact, they are received with a lot of suspicion. Other people even decided they'll only be taking out their trash at night so that so that these people will not be moving around within their neighborhood. That is it about the neighborhood watch, the plot analysis. Away from the plot analy analysis, away from the plot analysis, we also want to look at the character and the characterization. We need to understand the character the characters in, within the story. And about these characters, I'll mention them and maybe mention one or two traits about them. First of all, I'll start by some, I'll start on someone by the name of Omagano. Omagano was the only female member of the neighborhood watch. And among her traits, we are looking at her as resourceful. Uh, we are looking at Omagano as resourceful. For example, they had been given a pair of scissors by Miss Bezudenhout. And Miss Bezudenhout, the scissors that she extended to them, we see that Omagano is the one who is trimming their hair. 
we are looking at aliases here and the writer is particular to tell us that the trimming had been done by Omagano. She is a resourceful person. Ab away from being resourceful, let's call her dutiful. Someone who is loyal to duty. We see that she is among the people put on food duty and she gets up with them even the time that they were unwilling to wake up. When Elias wakes them up, she wakes up along, alongside them and she goes to town with them in search of food. Another illustration that she is dutiful, sometimes when Elias did not have the money to pay up so that they can be allowed to forage through the dumpsters, she goes behind the dumpsters and offers herself sexually as long as the rest of these people will get food. She has that sense of duty. It is my duty to make sure these people don't go hungry and she does everything to ensure that. We're also looking at another character, a character by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus, we've been told, he was the lieutenant. He was the second in command after Elias. And something about Elias that, sorry, something about Lazarus that you've been told, he used to be in prison. He used to have some kind of prison tattoos that were looking more of a scar. They're looking more as unskillfully done scars that shows that they did not take a professional to, to put the tattoos on him. That is what you're being told about Lazarus. About Lazarus, what are some of the, some of the character traits? We are looking at him as one, protective. He used to protect the rest of the members when it came to fist fights. Another thing about Lazarus, we are being told he is fierce or aggressive. The writer describes that whenever there was the presence of Lazarus in a fight, it tended to change the bookie's odds. In other words, a bookie, the people who are bet betting, if people had bet that the the neighborhood watch would be beaten and then Lazarus joins the fights and you had already bet you had already betted against them you would you had, you, had, you, had, you tend to lose because this guy was a fierce fighter he had been in prison about Lazarus again let's call him secretive according to Elias Lazarus never used to offer any information about his stint in prison the time he stayed in prison he has never been Opening, he never opens up to people about his time in prison. And we see that Elias considered him an equal. Therefore, he did not pester him about the details. Let's go to yet another character, a character by the name of Elias. Elias was an old man, graying the gray hair, and he was their de facto leader. And we are looking at him as one character trait. He was brave. Brave in that as much as he knew that Lazarus had been in prison, he did not fear Lazarus, that is, brave. Another il illustration showed that he was brave. We are looking at Elias. He had faced the South African defense forces in the jungle of Angola. In other words, he was a rebel. They were fighting the government and they even faced the, the fire from the government and he had to run away through the jungle in Angola. Another thing is he is charismatic, he is charming. A charming person uh, get, you get, gets to have his way without even giving a logical explanation. His charisma that makes him charismatic comes out in the way that he became their leader. He didn't call for a meeting and ask them, can I be their, your leader? But by, uh, by def defect, he just simply becomes their leader. Another one is he is sociable. He is friendly. Someone who's able to interact with the others, as it is being said that he is known by most of the kitchen staff in the city restaurants, in the city hotels. They refer to him simply as soldier or captain. That brings him out as someone who is sociable, and lastly, about Elias, uh, last but uh, not lastly, there's still another word. He is taciturn, taciturn or untalkative, someone who has few words. And you're being told he was not big on small talk. Most of the time he would be quiet. Therefore, it brings him out as someone who was taciturn. Another one is he is superstitious. The last one now, he is superstitious. Superstitious in the fact that 
he believes that dead cats can be used for superstition. Believing in superstition makes, makes him superstitious. We still have another person by the name of Silas. Silas, as a character trait, he's someone who is dishonest. He was always looking for something to filch or something to pilfer, something to, ask, uh, to steal. He had the habit of looking for things that are unattended and then he pilfers these things. For example, he looks at a trolley, a trolley that he finds unattended, he wills it away for later usage. It can be used later. At times he would find an avenue where, where he, would, uh, he would sell it and share the proceeds with his friends in the neighborhood watch, but they had already warned him against being a Christopher Columbus. He keeps discovering things that used to belong to other people. That is dishonest. Discovering things that belong to other people. In other words, they're talking about he's a thief. And he would discover things such as cell phones. And Elias has already told him, in case you are caught, you are on your own. And he warns him about his trait of being a Christopher Columbus. He is always discovering new things. About Silas, you can still look at him as dangerous. The description is that he is short and skinny, but he screams danger to anyone who knows what to look for. He screams danger. Even though he is someone who is short and skinny, he looks like he has a small build. A small build. But then he screams of danger, telling from his cocksure walk, the way he walks. The way his eyes never look away. He can fix his eyes on you until you're the one who shies away. And at the same time, he had some kind of a grin that is being described as impish. He's also defiant. There's a time they need to stay at the headquarters. But as they need to stay at the headquarters, what does he do? He decides he wants to, on, on Fridays and Saturdays, they used to avoid, they used to stay within the headquarter where they used to sleep, under the bridge. Because that was the day the police used to make rounds and they would arrest someone. But this guy, even though he has been warned that he shouldn't stray away, what does he do? He decides he needs to get away from the headquarter. And he's even calling upon Martin to join him. But then the other elderly members of the group, they warn him. If he wants to go, he goes alone because they know that danger is lacking. So he's defiant to refuse to listen. Another character is Martin. Martin is the newest member in the group. Martin is naive. We are being told he is yet to learn the ways of the street. And finally, we have Amos. Amos is aggressive. We are told that he couldn't hold back his tongue. He used to call someone an ugly word and even refused to apologize. And we see that this one caused him his death when he encountered a person who stabbed him using a knife. That is it about the plot analysis as well as the character and characterization we need to meet after the break where I'll take you through the themes as well as a sample essay question. Until next time, it is a goodbye.